Welcome to a new episode of the podcast. Vox Agent is made by AI for business executives that work with AI. We're doing a deep dive today, and the sources you shared are pointing to um, what looks like a really fundamental pivot happening in enterprise AI right now. A pivot? How so? We're seeing a move away from building these huge, complex, sort of do-everything agents. Right, the AGI dream. Exactly. And instead, the focus is shifting to creating and sharing these modular focused bits of knowledge they're calling skills. Okay, let's unpack that because, you know, it feels a little counterintuitive. For years, the whole story has been about building smarter and smarter agents. It has, but the sources are suggesting a new consensus is forming. Just making an agent smarter in a general sense isn't actually solving these very specific real-world business problems, not at scale anyway. So that's the tension. Our mission today is to really get into that hypothesis. Is expertise packaged as a skill more valuable than just raw intelligence in an agent? And more importantly, is it more scalable? That's the key for any enterprise. And for you listening, here's a quick way to frame it. Imagine you need your company's taxes done. Super complex. Who do you hire? Huh? Do you pick the genius with a 300 IQ who can figure anything out, but, you know, has to read the entire 2025 tax code from page one? A blank slate, basically. A brilliant blank slate. Or do you pick the experienced tax professional who's done this for 20 years, knows the system, knows the loophole? That choice. That's it. Brilliance versus expertise. That's <laughs> the fork in the road we're talking about for AI architecture. So let's jump right in with what our sources are calling the agent paradox. This is where it all started. Teams were building these incredibly sophisticated agents like the cloud code platform, and they just hit a wall. A very real wall. Correct. The agents had intelligence. Sure, they were capable, but they consistently lacked that deep specialized expertise you need for reliable work. It's the difference between knowing how to write code and knowing which specific compliance rules apply to that code for that industry in this quarter. That's where the tax analogy is so perfect. The 300 IQ genius. Right. That genius is an amazing machine. It can get the right answer. But it has to spend a huge amount of energy and time just figuring out the basics, the established rules, every single time. So it's slow, it's expensive, and probably unpredictable because it's always starting from scratch. Well, the tax pro is fast, cheap, and consistent. Why? Because they're using packaged procedural knowledge. And today's agents, they don't absorb that knowledge very well. Not in a durable way, no. You can feed it context for one task, but that learning doesn't just, you know, stick around for the next one. It's not easily packaged or transferred. And that forced a total rethink of the architecture. Okay, so if the problem is a lack of expertise, the solution, these skills, it sounds almost too simple. The sources define a skill as just a folder a folder with files and scripts inside. And the simplicity is the breakthrough. It really is. The folders hold the code, the prompts, the documentation that tells a general agent how to do a very specific vertical task. And this whole idea is a direct response to that gen AI paradox we've seen in the reports. The one where something like eight out of 10 companies are using gen AI. But the same number are saying they see no real bottom line impact, a lot of experiments, not a lot of transformation. Exactly. And that gap, that lack of value, it comes from the agents being too general. They're great horizontally. They can draft an email, summarize a report. But they choke when you ask them to do something deep and vertical. Like interacting with a 20-year-old internal CRM system or drafting a legal brief that has to follow some obscure regional standard. They just fall apart. So the idea is that these multi-skilled agents, they bridge that gap. They combine the general intelligence with deep, reliable execution. It lets the agent go from being a smart assistant to a specialized member of the team that can actually do things. That's how you get out of the pilot phase and into real systemic change. All right, so that's the why. Let's get into the how. The sources point to this big aha moment for developers. The realization that code is the universal interface. To the whole digital world. That's the foundation. Yeah. Once you realize the most powerful thing an agent can do is write and run code, you also realize the agent's core structure can be incredibly simple just uh, bash in a file system. So you don't need a complex scaffolding for the agent itself. No, because the real intelligence, the expertise, is now outsourced to those skill folders. And for an IT department, that sounds amazing. How did these folders, these skills, actually plug into that simple runtime? They're designed to be completely agnostic. They're just folders. So yeah. you can version them in Git, you can drop them into Google Drive, you can zip them up and email them. They just work with what you already have. There's a really good example in the sources about an agent getting stuck in a loop, being inefficient. Oh yeah, the Claude example. 
it perfectly highlights the problem. Yeah. The model had to apply styling to a bunch of presentation slides. Okay. And every single time, it would write the exact same Python script from scratch, run it once, and then forget it. Just a massive waste of time and tokens. It's the genius rederiving calculus every time he needs to solve a problem. That's it, exactly. So the solution was almost laughably simple. They just told the agent, hey, save that script in a folder called slide styler skill. So it becomes a tool for its future self. A standardized, vetted tool. Now it just finds the skill and runs the script. It's consistent, it's efficient, and it preserves all that computational effort. But that brings up the obvious next question. If you have hundreds of these skills, how do you keep from completely overwhelming the agent's context window? Its working memory is limited. That is the critical piece for making this scale. And the answer is something called progressive disclosure. Progressive disclosure. At runtime, the agent only sees the metadata for the skill. Think of it like a table of contents. It just sees the name expense report skill and knows that capability exists. So it's aware of the potential, but it's not loading the whole instruction manual. Precisely. Only when the task demands it, when it decides I need this specific skill right now, then it goes and reads the skill.md file and the other contents. And that protects the context window. It's what allows an agent to have access to hundreds of skills without grinding to a halt. It keeps things fast and, you know, keeps costs down. So if we pull all this together, what does the final architecture look like? The one that's emerging? It's really four key components working together. Yeah. First, you have the agent loop. That's the core model managing its own thoughts. It's planning. The brain, basically. The brain. Yeah. Second, that thin runtime environment we talked about, which gives it a place to work, the file system and code execution. Third, you have MCP servers. Master control program servers. <laughs> right. These are the secure gateways to the outside world, to your company's APIs, to external data. They handle all the secure handshakes. And the fourth piece. The fourth piece is the strategic asset, the library of skills. That's where all the proprietary knowledge, all the competitive advantage is actually stored. Which brings us to the strategic value, the so what of all this. Since this whole folder-based idea launched, what kind of skill ecosystem has emerged? It's split into three main types pretty quickly. First are foundational skills. These are built by the model providers, like anthropic skills for making Word docs or spreadsheets, general purpose stuff. Okay. Then I saw third-party skills. This is where other companies package their own value, right? Like browser-based, building a skill for their automation tools. Exactly. Or notion-building skills, so an agent can understand your workspace. It extends the agent's capabilities into the SaaS tools you already use. But the third category seems like the real game changer, enterprise-specific skills. That's the gold mine. This is where a Fortune 100 company teaches an agent its own secret sauce. Its best practices, how to use its weird 30-year-old internal software. So this is about more than just being efficient. It's about capturing and defending institutional knowledge. It becomes a massive competitive advantage. You build this library of proprietary skills that your competitors simply cannot replicate. It creates a flywheel, right. The more your agent uses your specific skills, the better it gets, the more indispensable it becomes. You're basically building a moat around your operational knowledge and finally getting real value from all those millions you spent on custom internal software. And what's really validating this whole approach is who is building these skills. It's not just engineers. No, and this is so important. We're seeing people in finance, in recruiting, legal. They're all creating skills. So you don't have to be a coder to teach the agent something new. It proves the simplicity works. It makes the agent something the entire organization can contribute to and benefit from. It stops being just a tool for the tech team. So what's next for development? If skills are the new valuable asset, they need to be treated like one. They need to be treated like software. That means much better tooling, testing, and evaluation. And we need to enable skills to depend on other skills, to build on each other for more complex workflows. Right, for predictability. You need to know that skill A will always call skill B correctly. For any mission-critical work, that's non-negotiable. This whole conversation really leads to the biggest implication of all, the impact on the workforce. This architecture seems designed to create what people call augmented intelligence. It really is. It shifts how we think about these things. They stop being just tools and start becoming, well, autonomous teammates. So you offload the complex, repetitive procedural stuff to the agent. And that frees up the human experts to focus on what humans do best. The creativity, the critical thinking, the complex strategy, talking to other people. 
But that means the skills humans need will have to change too. Absolutely. The demand is already growing for people who are good at AI oversight, at systems thinking, at creative problem solving, and of course, ethical governance over these skill libraries. It means companies need to be thinking about reskilling programs right now. Proactively. You can't wait until the shift has already happened. The long-term vision here, it's almost like a collective company brain. The skills create this living, evolving knowledge base that's curated by everyone. That's the real power. A new person joins your team, they start using the agent, and that agent already knows how your team works. It knows the best practices, the workflows. Because it's all been captured in these skill folders. The onboarding for new employees alone could be transformed, and the agent itself learns better. Any procedure it figures out can be saved in that standard format, making the learning permanent and transferable to the next model version. It stops the genius from starting at zero. Every single time. So if we were to give one key takeaway for an executive listening to this, it would be stop trying to build one giant bespoke agent for every problem. Start building your library of skills systematically. That is the path from isolated AI experiments to real enterprise-wide transformation. There's that great computing analogy from the sources that ties it all together. The large language models themselves are like processors. Right. Massive potential, huge cost, but not that useful on their own. Then the agent runtime is the operating system. It manages everything, directs the resources. And the skills. Yeah. They are the applications. That's where the domain expertise lives. It's where you solve real problems and create actual value. So here's the final thought for you to take away. As this ecosystem grows, a skill built by someone else, maybe in another department, maybe on the other side of the world, will make your agents smarter. So what's one piece of procedural knowledge, one simple process that you could save in a folder today to make your future agent more capable tomorrow? Thank you for joining the podcast and see you soon.